what's going on hell divers so it's been a couple days since my last video um which is funny because i actually uploaded a video where um the the stats of a helmet changed the stats of the armor kind of like the scout helmet changed the stats of the armor made you a little bit faster gave you a little bit more regen well the day i put that video out the morning whenever i put it out uh they actually changed all the armor uh adjustments with everything so like completely pointless now but getting into the changes um this is going to be my first video actually giving my opinion um i think the balance changes is going to be for the better um i don't think the meta was ever supposed to be single player how to beat hell dive solo right i believe the meta is supposed to be what its four players going to bring into the toughest mission when you have four players working together as a single unit now you have all the tools necessary to take out whatever's in front of you, right? As a single solo diver, you no longer have those tools with the real gun. Unfortunately, that is not the case anymore. So, I like it. Um, I will tell you guys and be completely honest. I don't know when my next hell dive video is going to be because I needed to adjust my difficulty because hell dive is extremely tough for me now. Keep in mind, I am disabled. I play with one hand, so anytime that maybe I have an itch or something happens, sometimes I have to completely stop moving. And I can't always keep running. So uh, Helldive has gotten much more difficult, especially with the armor changes. So I will go over um, real quick. Uh, I, I want to start with the armor. So um, with the changes, this is the one that I like now because it still gives you the medium armor rating with 100. But you keep your speed at 550, 125, right, with the fastest. But it gives you that armor rating. Um, right now, I don't personally see a reason to use the heavy armor even with it working properly uh, because the speed and the stamina region just isn't there. Uh, typically, you don't need to take hits. You need to avoid hits to avoid dying. So you're always running. So it is still, in my opinion, best to have something that's going to have high speed, high stamina region. You know, and this give, it doesn't give me any extra grenades. It doesn't give me any perks, but it gives me that stability of 100 rating, which is huge. It really does make a difference, you guys. Um, so maybe I try this one. You know, the stems being able to heal. You know, we're still using the shield. Let's let's not get that confused. Um, helmets really don't matter. I think the it was this helmet, maybe, I found, yeah, with this. I don't remember. I would have to look at it again. But, so, when it comes to the armor, um, I think light armor is still going to be the way. Um, and if you're having trouble dying, I think this armor right here is really nice for the extra padding. Um, and the whole suit just looks good when it's together because that is the helmet for it, and I like that visor, right? The red looks nice. Uh, moving over to the weapons, uh, I've kind of touched all the weapons. Um, what I will say is the Liberator is a fine weapon. The Penetrator, I felt I let my team down. I couldn't kill bugs that I thought I'd be able to. Um, didn't work as intended. Maybe I retry it, you know. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but it seemed like the Liberator would kill... Like, I, I had, you know, it's not like I was able to kill Hive Guards with this or, or anything faster or better. I haven't used this. Um, I'm just going to assume that it, if you're going to be shooting at the weak parts, like the butt of the, of the Charger or the underside of the Bile Titan, it might actually be better. Um, but at the end of the day, once you get to the Scorcher, the Scorcher does what all three of those do. So the Scorcher is the best weapon in the game at the moment. Probably was even before the Breaker nerf. Um... This, both, this one right here, again, I felt I left my team down. Uh, when I have used this gun, I felt I left myself down. Um, this gun is just terrible. I don't see any use for it. I, I don't see a, any use for a single fire weapon that does the damage that these do. Right? Like, so you can make the argument with the shotgun being single damage like these two. But this one absolutely pushes enemies that are well i haven't used it against the automatons but against the terminates it absolutely pushes the the smaller ones away if it doesn't kill them outright and the hive guards it will stun lock and just you'll kill them like you're not worried about it this one will go through their armor and will kill will absolutely actually kill uh hive guards guard hive yeah hive guards um but the problem with these are just a little bit slow right this one i think is still a very viable option against the terminants but at the end of the day this does a little bit of splash damage so if you can get it into like a group of three and push two shots you might get a chance to kill all three of them you know um so when there is uh, a hive guard which will take three to five shots 
you know, while you're killing that hive guard, you might kill a hunter. You might kill another bug through the splash damage. You know, and the fact that it just kills everything at three shots or four shots even, the the um, the, uh, the spore spewer from wherever you are in the map is absolutely amazing. I haven't used this one, so I don't know. I think uh, the breaker's still going to be meta. The slugger's still going to be useful and viable against the, really whatever you want, but better against the automatons. This one, you know, I think will have its place, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be these ones. Um, this one for your overall, if you just want, I think this one's going to be better for the Terminids. Um, this one I haven't used, but previously it was just really bad. So I don't know. Um, so I think people are still going to be using the Breaker. They're still, if you have a Scorcher, you're using the Scorcher. Let's just put it that way. I don't know what else to say. And then let's go over to stratagems. They did some reworks, in my opinion. I call them reworks, right? Not nerf or anything, but whatever. Um, we'll just go down the line. So machine gun's always been viable early game. Probably level like five. Probably falls off because then you just like you see here, it's able to kill all these. But once you get to like level six, seven, I would seven for sure. Um, but even probably level six when there's more chargers and even titans running around. You're not going to be... Let's assume there's 50 bugs. If Out of those 50 bugs, in the lower ranks, that's going to kill every one of them, right? All of them, maybe, except for a charger, if you're, like, having a charger on level 5. But you'll be able to kill all the other bugs, except for the charger. You know, same with the anti-material, same with the stalwart. You know, so these, like, early game are actually really good. Anti-material rifle still might be useful, in the later game now especially with the meta going to what it is to be able to pick off you know a lot of the the medium enemies with that from a distance might be nice and not, we're not talking the hunters we're talking like the the nurse spitters and, and that shit right so um i just don't see these being used and all this i'm talking about high del high, hell dive difficulty um although like I said, I may have to drop off the hell dive difficulty for a little while. Uh, the last session I just ran was um, suicide mission, um, and that was going okay, but server I got kicked out, so I, and then I decided to do this. So I'll jump back in and we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, I see the expendable anti tank and the recoilless both becoming a little bit more viable, um, especially with the railgun just not working right. So like, what are we going to use to take out a charger? Well, you know what, we might have to work on it being a team. And I will use an anti-tank. Now we both have one. You know, you don't bring a support weapon. We'll just use these. Or you do bring a support weapon. Bring a recoilless rifle. I'll wear the backpack for you. Maybe we both bring recoilless rifles and wear the backpacks for each other. You know? Um, well, I do believe that the auto cannon or the... Uh, whoop, where did I go? Uh, I went all the way down. I don't know how that happened. Uh, the auto cannon, still good. Still fun. Still really good against the robots. I think it's much better against the robots because they uh, act differently to the explosive damage than the terminids. Um, the flamethrower, I think, might actually become meta when it comes to the bugs. It will kill a charger and about half of its ammunition um, in a magazine. So I know it, it's going to take up some ammo, but it will get the job done. And like we're saying, we're saying about half. So you can take care of maybe two chargers with one full canister of, of fuel. Not bad. That beats the auto cannon, right? You have to get to the back of it, and then what? Five or six shots to maybe break its butt, and then it will bleed out. But it's still a danger, right? So, you know, and we're talking five shots, which is half. Six is over half, you know. So if it is six, you miss it. The flamethrower, you kind of just burn it wherever. You don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you're hitting it. It, it, it regard uh, disregards armor. The railgun, I still think, is going to be great. Like the devs have said, they wanted it to be more of like a, a long-range one-shot sniper, you know, and not a, a, a everything do all, take care of chart. Yeah, right. So um, it will still have its place. It will on unsafe mode will still one-shot. I think everything in the game that it already did, right. Um, so if, it, if if you can get, I think a one-shot on a bile titan with it i think maybe perhaps you still maybe be able to i don't know they did say that they were changing the damage to the like the, to the big parts right but if you shoot it in the face i've never gotten a one shot but when you shoot it to the face i don't think that's a big part um so the railgun i believe is still going to be viable just 
you're not going to have a team of four people running it because now you're putting your team at a disadvantage and not everybody can run. And what are we going to do with the Vile Titans? What are we going to do with the Charger? Hey, if we're, if we're playing together and cohesive as a group, so maybe like more communication, I don't know. If I play with my friends, you know, they don't have access to everything unlocked, so we've got to work around all that. But assuming everything perfect, you know, maybe one person needs to run a flamethrower. You know, maybe one person with an anti-tank. I will get to a couple other ones later on for support weapons, but I don't think we're going to see four real guns anymore, you know? I just don't see it's going to happen. I think the spear, if it can consistently lock on and one-shot the big, the bigs, uh, I think it could be viable. What do we use to take a titan? Hey, I'll, I'll be the spear guy, you know? Yeah, it's only one titan at a time, but hey, that one titan's gone, and I'll be able to load and be able to get another one while... Someone else can use an orbital rail cannon. You know, the laser... Well, I'll get to these. Right, so maybe the spear becomes meta. After, you know, they really work on it targeting the biggest thing and not worrying about other... You know, maybe if there's other things getting in its way, if it just si signals the highest HP and does every time, then it should never have a problem with its lock on, right? Unless, you know, you're looking at multiple things that tie the you know two titans and you want to shoot one and it's always locked on the different one but at that point it doesn't matter <coughs> so the railgun or the gatling barrage i think is the same problem with uh what i will get to and like i had mentioned with machine guns right early game it will kill all 50 bugs late game it's going to kill 10 of those 50 because it's just not designed it's not designed for late game I think we have better options for horde control, which I will get to as well, and I am going to also be testing. Uh, the airbus strike, you know, I think this has its place. Um, the problem with a lot of the orbital cannons is, are their cooldown, honestly. Um, and for the destructive damage, right? So, like, 80 seconds isn't bad, but late game, that's not going to do much. 120 seconds isn't bad late game. I don't know. Wait, it does shoot three times. Yeah, that one's actually not too bad. I've used it. Um, but again, you're not going to get a lot of the, a lot of the kills, right? And it's not about getting a lot of the kills, but when you're throwing it into a compound or a horde of bugs, you are trying to get a lot of kills because you need, you're actively trying to thin the horde, the horde. You're not trying to like get a kill count, right? So when it comes to kills, you need a kill. Uh, the barrages, I think for the cooldowns, I have used a 300. I haven't used a 200 since the, the patch update and I did not take out a medium bug outpost that to me is a problem maybe the maybe it was too small right and the 380 is too big so maybe i need a 120 for the mediums use this for larges i could look into that but i think for the 240 second call down cool down it they're still not good enough they're not good enough and they're not really good against the hordes like it kind of shows right here it working and i've gotten kills with the 120 but usually i want something fast that's going to be instant because I'm throwing it on terminal, because I'm trying to activate a mission. I'm trying to do something actively, right? So I needed to kill. That takes time. Now I'm running around for the next 20 seconds while it's maybe or maybe not getting kills, and I can't run into that area to complete the mission, right? Because now I'm out of it. And if it's not going to take care of the outpost where I don't want to run in, if I can just throw this and be gone, how fucking great, right? But not the case. I have never used this. I hear this one's much uh, tamer, like it's easier to control where it's going to go, so maybe throw it at the front, I lie, I have used it I have thrown it at the front of a medium bug post, didn't take it out so again, I was like, not happy with it, orbital laser is amazing, you'll still see this in every game, orbital rail cannon if it would one shot the titans I think it would be great, you know what, if it would one shot, tell you what, if it would one shot the chargers, I think it would be amazing the problem is, is it doesn't always one shot you know what maybe hold on i'm getting that mixed up i will get to another one that needs to one shot the chargers this one does one shot the chargers but what it needs to do is it needs to one shot the titans so that way again as a team play somebody runs this for the titans and then we will get to get to the other one later on here the eagle strafing run right again early game you got 50 enemies running at you you throw this it's going to kill all 50 enemies Late game, you got 50 enemies at you. You throw this, it's going to kill 10 enemies. It's not going to get the job done. Eagle airstrike. You know what? Early game, you got 50 enemies running at you. It's going to kill 50 enemies. Late game, you got 50 enemies coming at you. It might kill fucking 45 of them. It's not going to kill the chargers or the titans, but it might blow off the butts of the, uh, the chargers. 
right? And might knock out the Titan tummy tummies, right? So, so Airstrike is a serious class, like perfect. I still run it. You get three uses when your ship is fully upgraded. I, I mean, I will use this with the 500 um, back to back, you know, and just go for outpost. This this destroys outposts. You want something that's going to kill an outpost? Bring this. Bring the Eagle Airstrike. You got a big outpost? Bring a couple of Eagle Airstrikes, right? <laughs> um, Eagle Cluster Bomb. Early game, you got 50 enemies coming at you. It's going to kill all 50 enemies. Late game, you got 50 enemies coming at you. This will probably kill about 30 of them. So this one is probably still pretty viable. I don't know if it'll take out the, like, the, the big, those green ones. Oh, you know what? If it takes out those green ones, yeah, this will do good. So this one, this one's probably going to be be seen a lot more too, especially with five uh, uses when your ship is upgraded. Um, the Eagle Napalm, maybe we'll see more use. I have used it very sparingly, but it, it will definitely kill the smaller bugs. It will kill the bigger bugs. It will kill everything. It'll probably kill a charger if the charger stayed in the fire for the whole duration, right? If it was actually to stay in the duration the whole time, it'll probably kill a charger. Right, jump pack, the most fun uh, strategy of backpack, the best thing in the game to use, um, if it wasn't for the need of a shield late game. Uh, but any opportunity I get to run a jump pack, I run the jump pack. It is so much fun. Best in the game. Eagle Smoke Strike, haven't used it, might might have to become meta against the robots, especially on the evacuation missions. Here's where I wanted to get to with one-shotting the chargers. The one ten millimeter rocket pods are amazing when they work. Sometimes they will one shot a charger. Most of the time they don't. As you see here, they do a little bit of uh, group damage. Sometimes you can get chargers together, right? Two of them. Sometimes you can even get three of them kind of in close proximity. If that would consistently take out one charger and with the area of effect injure the other chargers or maybe with a good hit just completely remove its butt or kill it outright if those would completely just one shot a charger i think we would have um a much much healthier environment right now with the state of the game because it is much harder i will say it is much harder um but these don't sleep on these don't sleep on this whole hanger this whole hanger right even though i haven't used this even these you get four of them you get to call them in like, you get so many airstrikes, but the fact that you get five of these, why would you want three, four of these when you get five of these that will kill everything this does plus, right? The reason why you want three of these is because it will kill building, it will destroy buildings. The reason why you want two of these when you get the opportunity, because we'll talk about this, it will one-shot a Bile Titan. It will one-shot two Bile Titans. It will one-shot two Bile Titans, four Chargers, and every other scum around it. This, don't leave home without your 500, all right? Just don't leave home without it. Find a spot. Bring this instead of your backpack if you have to. Because you, you know what you can do? You can, you can, you can, like, instead of using a backpack, I'm going to use this bomb. And I am going to martyr myself. And I'm going to become a martyr. And I'm going to take everything with me. The shield can't do that. Don't leave home without your Eagle 500 kilogram bomb, which is about 1,100 pounds. A 1,000 pound bomb, basically. All right. Now we're going to the bridge. Some more orbital stuff. Um, I'm thinking that we might see some more of these. Now, hear me out. So the Orbital Precision Strike is the first one you get in the game, right? Say what you will. This is probably the best stratagem in the game. It's got a 100 second cooldown, and it will kill basically anything. It won't kill a Titan. I think it will kill a Charger. If you can, if you can hit a Charger directly, I think it will kill it. Um, which means, theoretically, it can maybe kill three of them, right? It can kill Stalker Nest. Uh, this is great. Don't sleep on this. Right? If you really don't know what to bring in, bring this in. You get it, you know, every minute and a half, basically, you get to call this thing in. And you get to use it all the time. Here's what I'm interested in. These two. 75 second cooldowns. I want to bring these in, and I want to see if they help with the Horde. Right? Because the Horde's the problem. You don't want to bring in machine guns to kill the Horde because you want bigger weapons. You want bigger support weapons. We need something else to kill the horde. But if we can use something like this, then I can call in, you know, basically every minute with my cooldown at with the full thing. When we're all running, and if we're all running together, this will kill. This will kill. I, I don't know if it'll kill chargers. Again, though, if the charger sits in it the whole time, I think it will. 
But what I want to do with this is throw it into the big bug holes, right? And so that way, instead of us getting overran by everything running out of those holes, this should be, be able to clear them out. The MS strike, kind of the same philosophy, but against the big guys, right? So now, when we're getting overwhelmed by chargers, hey, I got a EMS strike. I'm going to throw an EMS. Now it's frozen. Let's run from him, right? Smoke, again, uh, never used it. It might have to be meta against the robots, uh, and especially maybe those evacuation missions. This. What I'm seeing on screen looks like early game is going to kill 50 bugs, late game is going to kill maybe 20. If it can kill 30 or 40, if it can kill the big guys, right, like the, the spewers, then it has a place. The green spewers, though. It has to kill the green spewers, not the nurse the nurse spewers, the orange ones. It has to kill the green ones, because the green ones have the armor. So we gotta make sure we get through that armor. This one, we got the shield generator relay. Again, I don't know and ever use for this, but it, again, it might have to be meta if we're going up against the robots. Especially those, uh, the civilian missions, right? Here, we've got the Tesla tower. I have never used this. I have only ever died to this. Um, it does say that it just kills when you get close. Now, I don't know if it would get overrun. I haven't really used a lot of these in normal missions. Uh, any of these, right? So, like, the Tesla Tower, or we'll get down to them, uh, the sentries. They definitely die in the later runs, like Hell Dive, when you're doing those defense missions. So, I don't know. Um, but again, maybe it's something that can be valuable. Um, with the changes to the meta, and especially if the team maybe realizes it. Um, trying to just watch the video and see exactly what it's killing. Uh, so I had to do a little cut there. Um, so yeah, just trying to see what it's killing, right? So it does seem like it'll kill like multiple of them at a time, but is it going to stay alive long enough when the chargers are coming at it and there's 30 other bugs that it's taken out? I don't know. It will definitely take out your teammates. I know that much. All right, moving forward to Engineering Bay, this one has some of the better ones, for sure. Um, the anti-personal minefield and the incinerary mines, you know, maybe the mine, you know, maybe these will be better now, right? Because we'll just, we'll have to see, but I really don't see a, a use for these. They have kind of a long call-in when you're doing a defense, and, I mean, I've died more to these, so I don't want to kill too many. I haven't used them. These I've used... And I mean, it'll kill the bugs, but is it going to kill enough of them to get the job done? Would I rather just have a mortar? You know, supply pack has its uses, but with the shield generator and um, the jump pack, I don't know. I feel on lower difficulties, if you're going through ammo a lot, it might be useful. But even at higher difficulties when you are going through ammo, and lower difficulties you're going through ammo because you don't understand the game, so you're probably reloading maybe when you shouldn't, right? But later in the game, you're running around so much that you're usually going to come across a minor interest, minor place of interest, and, you know, those typically have ammo around them, or even objectives will have ammo around them, right? So my personal opinion is the supply pack is better for your you to use with the grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is a great support weapon. I would definitely um, recommend this. If you don't want to use the the rail gun, or the, uh, this, this just does it all. It doesn't really get rid of the big, big guys, but when you can get rid of swarms and the bug holes, it's amazing. Laser cannon, I still don't know if there's going to be a use for this. I've seen videos where it still doesn't really do anything to the chargers, so it's not going to take the place of the rail gun, um, which means people are just going to keep using the rail gun. And it reminds, again, mines, you know, one time you just don't know how good those are going to be. Guard Dog Rover, great. The Guard Dog is great. I don't even know why the Guard Dog isn't on this one. Where's the Guard Dog? Oh, Guard Dog's in here. Weird. I don't know why they're not in the same one. Either way, the Guard Dog Rover is great. Um, just watch out for killing yourself or teammates. Um, the Ballistic Shield Backpack, I've never used it. I've seen enough videos where it doesn't stop explosives, and there's a lot of explosives in the late game so I don't see the use for that ever this here this is the weapon I think everybody is sleeping on there have been videos out there but listen no ammo consumption you'll see in these videos it will kill the, the hive 
There's a hive guard in the middle. When after these bots, watch. There is a hive guard, and it takes out hive guards. And I've done it. It takes out hive guards. It one shots them. Oh, you know what? Excuse me. That isn't the hive guard. But those are definitely. It will kill the hive guards in a couple shots. Um, the brute commanders, I really don't recommend because it will. You'll blow their face off, and then it still attacks you way longer than the other terminids. So the brute commanders are a little bit rough, but you'll see. You'll have a group of like five or six, seven bugs, terminids, whatever. You pull the trigger two or three times, let it charge up and shoot and zap through them. You're going to get all seven kills. It crowd controls. It takes down big guys. It doesn't quite stun lock uh, the chargers like the railgun used to, and maybe still does on a fully charged, unsafe shot. Um, but the arc thrower, I think, is going to be the new meta. It takes no backpack, and again, no ammo. I absolutely love this thing. This is my new go-to. Kill generator pack, I don't think it's going anywhere. It now more or less has like a health bar on it. Once the health is depleted after enough hits, call it maybe 100, 100 HP, 150, I don't know. Um, and then it takes the 11 seconds to regenerate. Personally, I think this is going to stay meta as it just gives you that extra three, four, five hits of survivability, which is everything in the late game. Um, I will go ahead and talk with all of the turrets at once. Um, in defense missions, I really don't think you're going to go wrong with any of them, uh, as long as you keep them protected from the, the bugs. You can obviously get a better Gatling sentry over the machine gun sentry, um, but at the end of the day, you bring the sentry on defense missions, they're going to work. Keep them safe. Against the robots, any of the explosives are just demolish. Um, so yeah, honestly, I think the sentries might be better offensive in the, the mission-based uh, extractions and whatnot that we'll be doing. Maybe moving forward, if it can take out enemy outposts from a distance where we don't have to run in and, you know, rely on a 500 or something ridiculous, we will find out. And then the guard dog is just a lesser rover. Um, I guess if you can't wait to unlock the rover, get the guard dog. Um, I mean, hey, it's just an extra gun. You can't go wrong with it either way, right? But if you can wait for a backpack that's going to shoot, wait for the rover. It never has to reload, but I think it's stronger. Either way, that is my take on the update and just kind of an overall view of Shia gems and weapons and, you know, my take on it. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening and uh, have a wonderful day. Peace.